Okay, so I'm, I'm Stefan um, from the HPI. Um, there is a group of, of Hasso Platner. And I've been working on this topic um, during my, my PhD. So I'm, I'm close to finishing the PhD, still writing some more pages and um, yeah, hoping to hand it in this summer and then have a defense by the end of the year. The topic is aggregates caching for enterprise applications. Okay, now I can start the first slide. <laughs> so um, motivation for this research grew out of the observation that um, Enterprise data management is currently undergoing um, a fundamental change. Um, and parts of this change was also initiated by, um, by Hasso Plattner, who um, I think it was 2009 in his Sigma paper proposed to use an in-memory column store um, to, yeah, as, a, as a main persistence for uh, enterprise applications. And that um, has tremendous advantages for, for the application because um, um, they can they can operate on the lowest um, data granularity, and this this enables them to have the, the highest flexibility in, in, in uh, the way they, they can pursue their queries. And another thing, um, for example, in a financials application, um, the way they were they were written um, the last um, yeah 30 40 yeah probably only 30 years um, was that. For every um, account, for every, so for every ledger account, you, you're always keeping a sum, and, and you're always updating that sum as soon as a new data comes in, and that um, that is a lot of complexity within the application, and all of that complexity can now uh, we can now get rid of. So that's a tremendous advantage. But on the other side, when you when you think about it, you're always aggregating on the lowest, so you're always aggregating the line items um, that also increases um, yeah, the, the workload because um, yeah, it's, it's more CPU intensive. And um, when you imagine that there are multiple such applications, several users parallel accessing um, this data, uh, you, you need to have some means to, to scale the system. And um, materialized aggregates were, were, were introduced a while ago. Um, there is associated with uh, several problems. So you have uh, expensive maintenance of those aggregates. Um, you, you are limited in your flexibility. So that's actually what you want to get rid of. And, and also the application, uh, at least for, for enterprise applications, they, they um, really have to um, yeah, maintain this whole complexity. So, um, this was basis for my research to um, first of all really think about um, what, is, what is the impact of, of aggregate queries that are generated now by these modern enterprise applications. Second of all, what is the best aggregate materialization strategy and, and, and compensation strategy in um, this, this new environment? And this new environment I define as, um, first of all, the, the new type of enterprise application that are generating mixed workloads, so with transactional and analytical queries, and also the new data management system, which um, I, in, in my thesis, define as a columnar and memory database, such as SAP HANA. Third question, um, what is the best dynamic aggregate um, cache admission and eviction strategy? Because you, you want to be dynamic, you want to be flexible, you don't want to pre-materialize all your queries because you might not know them, right? And um, last question, um, how is, um, or how can you improve the handling of, of join queries? Because uh, when you have joins and you have multiple partitions, which I will come to later, um, you, you get into trouble, basically. So I will address that as well. Related work, which I just shifted from the end of my talk to <laughs> the beginning after the discussion we had. Um, I mean, materialized view maintenance, especially incremental materialized view maintenance, is, is nothing new and um, it's been around for, yeah, 86, uh, so 30 years now almost. Um, there are several strategies. Uh, the two most uh, common ones are eager uh, maintenance, which means that whenever you insert a new um, record that affects your materialized view, you update the materialized view. And lazy, the other way around, you only update your materialized view whenever you access your materialized view. And um, to 
to keep track of changes to a materialized view. There's this um, summary delta tables concept, which um, yeah, always, um, so when, when you're doing this, this lazy approach, you, you must keep track of your, your changes um, until the point where you access that materialized view to um, yeah, update it. Um, for dynamic cache management, there are a couple of uh, approaches um, that um, yeah, um, kind of quantify the cost savings uh, for each query. So um, as, as you can imagine, there are expensive queries and not so expensive queries. And a simple LRU algorithm would not be that efficient uh, for cache management. And uh, for the join optimization and partition tables, there are two approaches which we are also leveraging in, the, in this work. So um, just a quick recap cal uh, to column memory databases. Um, I won't talk much about this, just this one aspect which I am using as a basis of fun fundamental concept in my thesis, and that is the separation of uh, storage into a main and a delta partition. Um, SAP HANA is, is yeah, I would say the, the um, one of the commercial databases um, with most success at the moment uh, uses this, and also uh, HiRISE, which is an um, yeah, database that, that Martin uh, mainly has developed at Hochea, uh, open source, so uh, freely available. Uh, what's special about this main delta partition is that um, the, the main partition, which contains most of the data, so usually um, it's like 98 to 99 percent of the data, um, is, is not updated uh, besides this merge process which runs from time to time and all new data that's coming in, so the inserts, updates and deletes go into the data storage. Now when you have a tuple that's or record in the main storage that you want to update, what happens is that um, you invalidate that tuple in the main storage and you insert the new tuple in the delta storage having the same record ideas, ID, so you know exactly how to, to handle this logical update. Okay, and uh, yeah, now th the main idea, so maybe the abstract of, of um, this aggregate cache that I've been, design been designing and implementing during CSIS is um, that for every aggregate query, you only cache the part that affects the main partition or that's computed on the main partition. And um, the aggregation on the delta partition, you always compute on the fly, and then you combine those two query results in delivering the final query back to the user. So this is the, the architecture. Um, yeah, on the left hand, the different enterprise applications. Um, this is SAP HANA, so to say. Um, and this thing on the right is, is what's been implemented during this thesis. Um, so let's yeah, start with the storage. So you have the delta storage and the main storage for, for every table, those two partitions. I mean, the delta can be empty for some tables, but um, usually for the tables that have a um, yeah, lot of transaction throughput, you, you have uh, some records in the delta. Um, then another important thing is the consistent view manager that gives me or that, that accesses um, some lists of, of, of um, yeah, bit vectors, gives me the visibility of the, um, the records for the current transaction or for, for all visible transactions at the moment. And yeah, so the aggregate cache um, has a couple of um, components that, that manage the, the aggregate cache entries. And an aggregate cache entry always has a key, a value, and some metrics which we are using for our dynamic cache admission and eviction strategy. This is the aggregate cache entry in, in more detail. So we need a key, obviously, to, to identify that aggregate cache value. And uh, that consists of the table name, an ID, the number of, or the combination of grouping attributes for the aggregate, um, the combination of aggregate functions, and the filter predicate that that query uh, is currently um, using. And uh, we normalize that, that key so that uh, when you have a query that has the same semantics, um, just by you know, 
uh, mixing the, the, the ordering, for example, you still um, can get the same results. The aggregate cache value has um, three main parts. First one is a dirty counter that um, detects any changes of the main partition, which we need to handle separately. Then you have a reference to the visibility at the time that that um, yeah, aggregate cache value was, was taken, so it's a snapshot. And then you have the actual values, which consist of the grouping combinations and the associated aggregate values. And for the aggregate cache metrics, there um, yeah, are different, um, different metrics in here. So um, we have the status if it is cached or not. Then we have a profit, and that profit is essentially calculated based on all the um, on all the, the metrics in here. So ex execution time of on the main partition, on the delta partition, number of records aggregated on the main and delta, um, yeah, number of references and last access time and so on. Can you explain to me again what the reference to visibility? That is um, gives me the reference to the bit vector. Um, that uh, is, is associated with one table and gives me the visibility of the records within the table. Oh. Because we, we could have, for the example of, of updates, when we invalidate some records in the main, they're set to zero, so they're not visible anymore, but they are still there, so we need to, to, to figure out how to, how to handle this. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the central part of, of the thesis is um, the, the aggregate maintenance and, and query compensation. As I just said, uh, we have those two existing maintenance strategies, but we're doing things differently. And what we do is um, we always compensate a cached aggregate query with respect to inserts by aggregating on the fly the delta partition. And Updates and deletes, which affect the main partition, are handled by doing a bit vector comparison of those two snapshots, the visibility bit vector at the time of cache creation and the one uh, at runtime of this aggregate query. And then we can filter out the records that have been deleted and we can uh, subtract them from the aggregate result. Okay, I hope you can, can see this. This is um, the flow of, of what's, what's happening when an, an aggregate query comes, comes in and is handled by the aggregate cache manager. First of all, we check if it qualifies for being handled by the aggregate cache. So if the, the, because we don't support all aggregate functions, but only functions that are self-maintainable. Otherwise, um, there is no way to, to update, it, update them incrementally. So when it qualify, we check if, um, the computed key is already in the cache or not. If it's not in the cache, we first of all get the global, global visibility vector for the main partition, then execute the query only on the main partition, take that result, cache it, so create the aggregate cache entry. Then as a next step, get the current transaction visi visibility vector for the main partition that um, includes values that have been deleted by the current transaction. Do the, the, the main compensation, so, so taking out those values, because we, we want to keep the aggregate cache entry even if the transaction aborts. Then do the same thing for the delta partition. Do the delta compensation, which is essentially much easier as we just can just aggregate what, what is there, what is visible, and then return the result. And if it's already cached, we only need to figure out which, which um, records have been um, deleted in the main partition, do the main compensation, and do the delta compensation and return the result. Okay, so that was the, the easy part. Um, now, um, as you can imagine, when you have a join of multiple tables um, and you, you, you cache those the query result computed on the main partition and you do an on-the-fly aggregation of the delta partitions, you can't just combine them because there might be an overlap between um, 
records in those two partitions. And um, that's essentially yeah, a very hard, widely known, known problem in the classical material SV maintenance. And uh, the way we approached this was by, by analyzing the way enterprise applications access, um, or first of all, what, what um, schema patterns there are in terms of, of data schema and also workload patterns. Um, we found that for many applications, so for uh, we checked financial applications, uh, CRM applications, materials management applications, there's this concept that we have two tables, so a header and an item table that contain most of the transactional um, records and all the other tables are pretty much just dimension tables and text tables, configuration tables and, and um, stuff like that. And the idea now is to um, capture a temporal relationship between records inserted in those two transactional tables and use that relationship to do joint pruning during runtime. So to every, to every record we add to those tables, we add an additional temporal attribute, which can be a timestamp or a transaction ID for every primary and, and foreign key attribute. And when we insert a matching tuple for that, for that record, we, we do a lookup of the primary key temporal value and, and, and set it accordingly, and then we can um, execute join pruning. What would this MB? I can show you an example. So these are the two tables. We have um, a, uh, um, yeah, a header table and an item table, a main partition and a data partition. Um, this is the primary key for both tables. And this table has a foreign key which essentially um, matches this, this primary key. And um, what we do is that for every primary key tuple, we insert this timestamp, which can be the transaction ID as well. And then when we add a um, foreign key tuple, we do the lookup. So here, for example, we do the lookup and check the timestamp of that foreign key value which is two, and set it accordingly. And then once, once we've done that, um, we can, during query execution, simply check if the min and max values of those attributes of those two partitions, if they overlap or if they don't overlap. If they don't overlap, we can just prune that subjoin. And if they overlap, we have to, we have to execute it, but we can then even use that um, foreign for a key temporal attribute to do, s to do predicate pushdown, which makes it even more efficient. So in this case, we see that um, for this subtron, we don't need to execute it because four is smaller than five. And same here, we have four is also smaller than five. So we can prune those two subtrons. So when you say smaller, why not equal? When it's equal, then... then So, so in this case, um, we have the, the problem that um, this table has been merged earlier than, than this one. So we have an overlap of, this, of these two tuples. So we cannot prune that subtrain, but must execute it. Yeah. But still, we can, we can use um, predicate pushdown by saying, just filter this table by, by, this, uh, by this attribute, which is lot more efficient than checking checking every attribute. Yeah. Okay, so for experimental evaluation, um, we did two approaches because because what what we're having in or what we what we, what we found in in, in research um, regarding mixed workloads is just this CH benchmark, which is a combination of TPCC and TPCH. Um, but there were a couple of things that did not quite reflect the, the um, characteristics which we found in the workloads we, we've seen in, in uh, the applications we analyzed. So uh, we created our own benchmark um, based on yeah, real data from an industry customers. So that was 
uh, from a financial, financial and controlling application, um, 330 million records, um, yeah. two transactional tables, had an item table and a couple of, of dimension tables. For this um, experiment, we just used one dimension table with 2,000 records. And the workload um, we created by analyzing the inserts based on the timestamps we had in the, in the original data. So every insert had a timestamp. And then we mixed in um, aggregate queries based on um, yeah, interviews with customers, uh, with um, people using the system. So we, we asked them how many times a day do you use that report? And they said, okay, that many times. And, and um, we created um, yeah, some analytical queries and mixed them, mingled them together. So this is um, first evaluation regarding the, the maintenance, aggregate maintenance strategies. So as I said earlier, we have this eager incremental and lazy incremental strategy, which are red and green, and the aggregate cache, which is, which is blue. And what we varied here on the, on the x-axis is um, the, the percentage share of inserts in the total um, the total number of statements of the total workload, which are combined of inserts and selects. So on the far hand left, you only have selects to an aggregate. So n no updates to an aggregate, which is why it performs slightly better, uh, slightly worse our strategy, because yeah, accessing a tuple of a materialized view is always faster than doing the delta compensation, which I've just uh, explained. But as soon as we, we have a couple of inserts, um, those strategies perform worse, and um, we we are pretty much pretty much stable, just a, a slight slight increase. This is um, an evaluation of um, the, the joint pruning benefit. So, so what we've seen before was just for for one table. This is now taking the other tables into into account, which means we have to do joints. And um, yeah, the red one is doing an uncached query, so we're not using the cache at all, which performs bad, of course. But uh, even when we use the cache, so we have two strategies. Um, one is without any pruning, so we have to do all the, the subjoints and uh, combine them together. And another slightly improvement is to just uh, prune tables that have empty delta, rec uh, empty delta partitions, which yeah, gives us a minor performance improvement. But uh, using the Full pruning I've, I've just described uh, gives us an improvement up to a factor of three towards the non, non pruned approaches. And when the number of records in the delta partition increase, that goes up even, even higher. Because you have to um, yeah, compensate more values or records. Um, we did the same with the CH benchmark. And here, the number of involved tables for a query were much higher, which uh, resulted in the fact that um, the un unpruned um, or the cached aggregate queries without pruning were not even much faster than the uncached query because the, the compensation process of doing all those sub subjoints uh, increases exponentially and that's why the performance is, is so much worse compared to the uh, FICO benchmark, which had just three tables. Yeah. Last experiment is the, the predicate pushdown uh, I mentioned, which is when the pruning fails, you can still use the temporal information you have in your data to do a pushdown to, to yeah, basically filter, filter your records first and then do the join query. And that, depending on the number of records in your main partition, um, yeah, gives us a much yeah, in increasing performance benefit up to a factor of four. And that is basically yeah, summarization of the contributions here. So first one is the design and implementation of the aggregate cache. Um, then the, the query processing which includes the compensation, the main and delta compensation, as well as the, the aggregate maintenance approach. That one is the, the joint pruning. And last one is an evaluation, both with the 
yeah, industry standard benchmark. It was not standard yet, but uh, hopefully soon. And um, our own benchmark which we've created using enterprise or real customer data and workloads. And future work, I mean, there's lots to do. Um, one thing I was thinking about was um, to include machine learning in deciding which, which queries you want to cache, because you could also do something like predicting, okay, I'm on this drill down path now, so the next query could, could be going into this direction, so you could already cache that query before you actually, the user actually executes the query. Um, second thing is that for, for um, data updates, the, the join pruning approach um, is, is, is um, not performing very well because you have to um, keep track of where exactly the record is updated and um, it's essentially uh, yeah, kills, kills the, the performance uh, benefit of the approach, but there are certainly ways to, to improve this, this performance. And the third one was to not um, include those, those temporal attributes in the first hand, but discover them automatically during, during query execution. That's the, that's the, yeah, the three things, and with that, I have a thank you slide. So, thank you very much. Thanks.